Hello and thanks for watching. Welcome to part 4 of Road to Omega, a series of videos covering the Wipeout games leading up to the release of Wipeout Omega Collection on the PlayStation 4. In this video we'll be looking at Wipeout 64. So here it is, it's the only Wipeout released on Nintendo and as you can see on the front cover here it offers up to four player split screen which is a first for the series so that's quite cool. Uh, it uses the controller pack for saving games and the rumble pack which if you're not familiar with this fits in the back of the controller and it's essentially what dual shot controllers do these days offers vibration in game makes it seem more real it's quite cool it's the first example of that it's a bit heavy on the back of the control but there you go that came free with lilac wars here in the uk on the 64 uh, but yeah, and there's the actual cartridge. And so yeah, this came out at a similar time to F-Zero X on the Nintendo. And uh, the two obviously compared quite a lot. Uh, both had the benefits. Wipeout has more scenery around the track and such. And uh, F-Zero has more ships on screen. So you can be racing against like 30 ships. So they're both good. But yeah, this came out in 1999, and it was just before Wipeout 3 on the PlayStation. So yeah, that's that. Let's cut across and look at some gameplay. So here we go, we're in Wipeout 64. And here's the main menu. And they've introduced a challenge mode, which is uh, various challenges, and you complete them and you unlock the next one. So race will be racing and winning in a certain position. Time trial beat a certain time weapon is a precursor to the eliminator mode from the later games single race time trial multiplayer that's split screen this game has split screen up to four players obviously the more players you add the uh, rougher the game will look eventually when you've got four players you've got just the track on screen there's no scenery around it or anything like that it's still quite good though offering four player split screen is something the n64 was brilliant at and um, it's great seeing there well, let's just go into a single race and uh, we'll have a quick look at the game. And so you've got the same speed classes from the previous game, Vector, Venom, Rapier, Phantom. Um, we'll just stick with Venom while I'm talking about the game. So here are the tracks and you've got one more to unlock down there. Let's start at the top here. Same ships from 2097 again. And uh, Piranha is unlockable just as it was in the previous game. We'll start with Pfizer. Lo the game loads really quick because it's on a cartridge so here we go <clears throat> and you can immediately see the similarities with 2097 same voice as well yeah so this is what it looks like same as before futuristic racer blue speed pads to speed your ship up uh, colored pads give you weapons same basic weapon set as 2097 but um, there's a few extra ones and the uh, ships have their own individual super weapons. So I think Faisar's super weapon is a machine gun for example. And same as before you've got your speedometer in the bottom right and also a uh, shield energy bar. Bit different design to 2097, probably not as clear especially the way they overlap like that. But yeah, basically, it um, plays in a similar fashion to 2097, but you're using an analog stick on the N64 controller. So you've got what feels like um, very accurate controls. You've obviously still got your air brakes, but um, it just feels easier to shift the ship around using the analog stick. And there we go, there's a super weapon. Yeah, Pfizer's is the machine gun. And basically it's just a really powerful weapon and each ship has a different one. But yeah, so I was saying before, the tracks in this game are basically based on the tracks from Wipeout and Wipeout 2097, but mirrored or reversed and uh, changed up slightly. But yeah, if you become familiar with the tracks, you'll notice similar parts from the other games. And... Uh, 
I don't, I don't feel like that's cheating really, using them like that, because they look completely different, they play different, because they're in reverse or mirrors, so it doesn't really make any difference to the overall game. There we go. And yeah, you can see at the bottom though, they've added elimination counter, which is quite cool. And let's get out of here and we'll go look at another track. So yeah, let's just go into a time trial for just to be different. And we'll go to the next track and a different ship. But yeah, it's often forgotten that there was a wipeout on the N64. And uh, it's not a bad game or anything, it's, just, it's primarily known as a PlayStation series. And, you, you, I mean, it's obvious why. There's so many releases on the PlayStation. But yeah, I, I mentioned before it came out at a similar time as F-Zero, and the two were compared quite a lot. Uh, generally speaking, I think people think they're both good games. A lot of people prefer one over the other. I enjoy F-Zero. It's a good game. I don't think I'd say I prefer either of them, really. But yeah, that's a quick look at that track, so let's cut across to another one, and I'll uh, talk about the game a little bit more. So here we are, next track, Oricom Ship. And uh, I was saying before, the game has split screen, and speaking of that, the Wipeout Omega Collection, uh, as this is Road to Omega, I might as well quickly mention, that Wipeout 2048 in that has been confirmed to have split screen. For two players, I believe, uh, which is cool because 2048 it was obviously on the Vita, doesn't have split screen on that, so it's really nice that they're putting that in. It's kind of become a staple of the series after this game, really, except for the PSP releases, obviously. And yeah, so back to this game, the soundtrack on this, considering it's on a cartridge, is pretty good. It's nine tracks, um, no Prodigy, unfortunately, and Cold Storage which is kind of a staple of the series, isn't really in this game. But the tracks that are in there for cartridge-based music is fantastic. That's nice. And yeah, talking about the way the game feels and flows, it's, the analog stick makes it feel very smooth to play. All the ships handle really well. They still have their unique feeling, but they um, handle very well with the analog stick and uh, it's on a par with 2097 really maybe the track looks a little smoother but the um, yes overall it's quite similar it's it's almost not really a true sequel as it's somewhere in the middle it's like 2097.5 great game though definitely worth a look right let's cut to another track Okay, so we're on another track and we've got the Kyrex ship now. And I'm um, just going to briefly mention about Wipeout and its popularity. Like, here in the um, UK and Europe in general, it's quite a popular series. It's always done fa fairly well, not, not exceptionally well or anything. But um, in the States, I know it doesn't do as well. And um, I'm not sure if that's to do with marketing or general gaming preferences, but it's always been a um, primarily... A popular series in Europe, and um, you've noticed that with some of the releases, like Wipeout 3 Special Edition was a European only, or PAL region only release. So it was Wipeout Pulse on the PS2. I know Wipeout Pulse PSP DLC was not available in the States either. And it's kind of a shame. Uh, I'm not sure what they'd lose by maybe not putting it out, M manufacturing costs maybe or something, but... It's unfortunate, there's a lot of fans in the States who've missed out on some content over the years. But you you can pick up these um, games quite cheap on eBay and stuff, so I don't know if people over there have um, got hold of PAL systems and things, but 
it's not too expensive to get hold of this stuff. And uh, N64 in particular is not an expensive console to collect for or um, get hold of old stuff. It's not like the NES, NES or uh, Super Nintendo where things have gone up in price quite a bit. You can still get these for a reasonable price. And it's worth it. So yeah, let's cut to the next track. So here we are, next track. Gone back to Pfizer. And um, yeah, just speaking of the Nintendo 64 in general, it was part of the fifth generation of video game consoles. Primarily known for the PlayStation, Sega Saturn and the Nintendo 64. And um, the PlayStation definitely won that generation. I hate saying won, but it was the most popular system, it had the most releases, it was the most successful, followed by the Nintendo 64, and then uh, Sega Saturn, which had a few mishaps along the way and um, didn't really register with gamers as much. You know, everyone who liked Nintendo kept stick, stick with Nintendo, and uh, PlayStation just won over a lot of gamers. So it is easy to see why they would develop a wipeout for the Nintendo as it was a pretty popular system at the time. Nice little jump there. But yeah, uh, let's uh, cut over to the next track. Okay, so with the next track I'm going to show you the split screen in the game and it is split horizontally which is never ideal for Wipeout because you always want to be able to see the track and the track ahead of you but uh, this is the first game where they did split screen so we'll forgive them for that one so yeah let's have a quick look at this Okay, we'll have a, a look at another track here because it's uh, quite smooth and I want you to see how smooth the gameplay is in two-player. Okay, we're just going to look at another track and uh, then we'll finish up. Okay, so that's been a quick look at Wipeout 64. It's a pretty solid game, it's worth a look. If you've got an N64, if you like F-Zero or Extreme G, it's definitely worth checking out. Uh, it's pretty cheap to get hold of these days. And yeah, uh, stay tuned for more videos.